Most of the churches that we see today, most of the pastors we see today, most of them have fallen off the grid. And by the Bible, they're not little flock, they're very small flock. So we're going to decipher whether the church meet yourself to is giving you spiritual growth. Because when you look at it, you can't live higher than the pastor. The pastor is the shepherd of that flock. So you can never live above what you are fed. If you are fed on ecclesiastic weeds, that's what you will grow on. You are fed the word of the living God. That's what you live on. So if your pastor, for instance, begins to challenge the Bible, that it didn't mean that it meant this, it meant that, it meant those. Then obviously you're sitting under a denomination. And when you're sitting under a denomination, you are not feeding on the world. Because Jesus said, my sheep know my voice, but they will not follow. So the fact that you're sitting in such environment implies that you yourself are submitting yourself to a system that is not of God, a system that is counter-revolutionary to what the Bible teaches us, a system that is essentially anti-Christ. The anti spirit, the anti-Christ spirit, so close to the right spirit that if it were possible, it would deceive very elected people. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Remember, will never leave. Pastor, so I'm going to share this um, that I've done today. So let's have a look at uh, pastors weighed down by unbelief. Mark 9, 24. And straight away the father of the child cried out and said with tears, Lord, I believe, help thou mine unbelief. There is only one sin that we see in the world from Adam. That is the sin of unbelief. Unbelief is where you doubt even zero and one of what the Bible. So if your church, your pastor, not even one word, because remember Jesus said, not even one dot or one tip or one comma, one foot will have to be fulfilled. That's why our brother Moses, during the days of slavery, he said, I would rather be standing on the word of God than in heaven. And then somebody asked him, because they couldn't understand why, they would say, stand on the Bible rather than be in heaven. Because we all assume, we all know that heaven is a nice place. Then he said, because then in heaven, the heavens that we see will pass away, but my word shall not. The fact that no pastor disbelieves even one word. How many words did Eve disbelieve? Of that tree thou shalt not eat. Tree thou shalt not eat. That's all they had, Adam and Eve. But Eve was deceived into, into receiving what the devil was selling on that day. Many people today in their churches, there's the pastor being weighed down by a chicken. Christians are supposed to be eagles. And when you're an eagle, that shouldn't happen. You shouldn't be weighed down, overpowered chicken. Oh, blessed be the name of the Lord. You see a church that even one word of the Bible, the words of the prophets that came before us, chosen before the foundation of the world, God himself, there is a problem. So most people in all the churches that you are in, even if you are an ego, but that ego being run by a but if your pastor is being run by a chicken religion, then you will not be able to have eagle food. Because what does the Bible say? Where the carcass is, the word of God, the eagles will. 
So there is no carcass there that the eagle is. Oh, they are, it's now where the chickens are, the denominational Christians. Let's have a look at what Brother Venom says in Blind Bible, verse 95. There's only one sin that's unbelief. All other, these immoral acts are only attributes of that one unbelief. He that believeth not is condemned already. You see, you must believe. So, because you drink, you smoke, you, you cheat, you lie, stop, and all these things that you do, those are not sins, but they are what? Attributes of unbelief is things that are expected of unbelievers to do. It's like, for instance, if you're born as a whale, you behave like a whale. If you're born as a chicken, you behave like a chicken. Born as an eagle, you, you behave like an eagle. That's why I find that most people start living their churches, go elsewhere, because they've realized that I'm an eagle, that I'm under chicken, chickenized, a denominationalized a religion that I shouldn't be. And then they leave and move somewhere else. There is only one sin, and that sin is unbelief. So when you're sitting up there faster, who doesn't believe even one day that believer? Many people come from Africa today, and when they come here, they think that they should be under because of that neo-colonial mentality. They think that they should be sitting in that white pastor. Nothing wrong with the white pastor. They are following the word. But if they follow 99.9% of that word, they leave that 1%. Because most of these white churches, the people that they have are homosexuals. That's one of the uh, contending points. And when they have some homosexual in that, but that means they won't be preaching against homosexuals. If they have uh, an adulterer in that church, they will not be against adultery. So whatever you're sitting under, when you're fallen, when your denomination fallen, then you yourself are fallen with it because you can't live higher than what you go to. You can't live higher than the in you. And that is why you need to choose wisely. Do not unbelief comes because we serve Jesus way. Jesus did not die halfway. He went all the way. So if you are a Christian, you go all the way. In the name of Jesus Christ, and you shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. Three days in, you start and being baptized in the name of Jesus Christ, not in the name of Father, Son, Holy Ghost. In the name of Jesus Christ, you shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. Travel the Genesis, you've repented, but you still haven't got the Holy Ghost. The key is the Holy Ghost is Jesus coming and living in you. So when somebody thinks that is wrong, you pick it. No, this is not right. There is something wrong with it. Brother Branham says here in the resurrection night and any black sleeping preacher is going to cause some. That's what the matter with the world is. First thing you know, a trouble come up. Jonah said, now you tie up my hands and feet. Throw me out in the ocean. Everything will be all right. He throw him out in the ocean. And then the first thing you know, a big fish came by and swallowed him. I was talking to somebody about it. Jonah was black -slated. The only good thing about Jonah's case is it was only him that was black -slated. But when your pastor has, when your pastor has compromised of even one word that is in the Bible, spoken word, then you have actually backslidden with him. Because when you sit under such a ministry that teaches fables, remember, a lie is not outright a lie. Those people find it out. A lie is only 0 0.01 of what you are told. When you hear a lie, it means that some or part of it, 99% of it is correct and true, but only 0.1% is wrong. So that's what a lie is. That's what it is. the many people in the churches, but when you have you repent, you go in the name of Jesus Christ, the Holy Ghost, nobody can deceive you. 
Jesus now. Every time you hear a word, like for instance, many years ago, somebody was telling me that Brother Brennan said something, but when he said it, it didn't sound like him. I said, no, no, that's not Brother Brennan. Forget about it, you know. So you have to make sure that your pastor stays within the confines of the Bible. We were warned by Brother Brennan in uh, 1957 in the Hebrews, number two. We don't know what will wind its way into. When it does get here, my sheep know my voice. Stay with that word. Don't you never leave that word. You stay right with it. You stand fast in the liberty where Christ has made you free. Be not entangled in all those yokes of bondage and so forth. Stand fast and stand free. God will bless you. We have nothing in the world to fear about. And you don't know what snake the one that wound up to Eve will find itself to the pulpit. What quality of people is your pastor? You'll be surprised sometimes some of these people as well, homosexuals in disguise. And the reason that they're doing it is that feeding you a doctrine. Slowly but surely, you will receive it. And the worst part now, the worst part of all this, you may be, uh, have repent in the name of Jesus Christ and receive the Holy Ghost. But our children still haven't received the Holy Ghost. And so when a doctrine comes from the Pope, already children, because when you say, this is our past, how we go, Children immediately reverence that particular person. Whatever they say, they accept law, stock, and barrel. That's why I find in most churches now, children are having, you know, uh, fornication and all this, and it becomes normalized. No more churches teach, teach anymore about abstinence, not have, being uh, fornicators in Bible. They failed to understand what the difference between uh, Adultery and fornication. Fornication is sex before marriage, and adultery is sex after marriage. So when you distinguish those two, how many of these pastors are still teaching? Very few, even in our so-called mess. Because sometimes some of the pastors have fallen off the clubs. When they fall into adultery, the pastors, when he comes to them, that's what brings you a spirit that is running him. So when that adult spirit from the will entangle itself in the children, they are malleable. Having traveled that three-day journey, that's why it's not just about you, it's about your children. What sort of scenario, what sort of problems are they going to face in the future when you live under such a ministry? Let's hear what Brother Brennan says. We have John 10, 27. You hear my voice and I know them. They follow me. So when somebody preaches Bibles that are not biblical, it's time to move. In Jubilee year, Brother Branham said in 1954, so it becomes an individual affair. Every man, woman, as we see all, all things, the Bible says, the two spirits will be so close in the last place still it could deceive the very elected if you will. That's right. My ship know my voice. Tell that they will not fall. Oh, what a day that we're living in. And the Jubilee time is about close. Yes, sir. It becomes an individual family affair. Are we going to submit ourselves under such things? Are we going to submit our children under such teachings? What sort of teaching are they getting to? And if you, some of you that have come from Africa, you come here because of um, uh, colonial mentality, always think white people are better than you, and you submit yourselves under that, those ministries are ministries which are of the devil because they don't believe much of the Bible anymore. That's why I really believe right now that in going into this very few white people because they don't believe the Bible as it 
always been nominationalized. They've added a few things here and there and taken away. But revelation is if you take away or add, then that is the so you need to find the right place to take it to the, your, 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 your family. Brother Branham here in choosing of the bride was a very good message, especially for those who are not married yet. It shows you what to do. A wife. Don't choose your church the same way you did your wife. See? What science did for her was a marvel. But you better keep away from your church on that. Made paints, powders, and all these other things. Used by character. Word. Many of us, if you chose a wife before you were, married, you, you were a Christian, we married the people that wore makeup, trousers, and all this. Max Factor has created a more beautiful woman because you can see two women, one without makeup and the other with makeup. The one with makeup is 100% better than the one without. That's not our Christian heritage or heritage. Those things come through. So if you use makeup and all these things that the world is using, what then is the difference between heaven and hell? Are we saying heaven and hell are interconnected? There is no relationship at all between heaven and hell, except the fact that they so when you look at that, you must always what are we supposed to be doing? Where are we going? Our remember, we are in a pilgrimage. This is not our home. That's why we as we actually embrace and the because great and delightful is the a believer. For God loves it when you die, because that means you're coming to him. So that is what we should be looking at. Watch out for what will what snake may have been in training for hundred years in the church. Just because it has come through the ranks does not mean that it is right. Come through the ranks and look after Judas. But he couldn't go to the Holy Ghost. Many of the pastors that we have to we ask them, do you have the Holy Ghost? Many of them, don't, they don't know. They can't even remember when they received it. Like a woman saying, I, I can't even remember when I gave death. Possible. So when you receive the Holy Ghost, know it. Just like a woman giving birth, she will know that I am giving birth. Unless if there's some medical problem or something or she's fainted or something. The Holy Ghost, you will know it. And then the question becomes: have you received the Holy Ghost since you believe? Have you Received Holy Ghost. Have you received the Holy Ghost since you believed? 